بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم dear students assalamu alaikum uh, today i am going to discuss another very important disease that is bovine tuberculosis you have studied tuberculosis in humans in medical microbiology course but today we will be discussing tuberculosis in animals and because most of time we discuss it in cattle and buffalo that's why we call it bovine tuberculosis so it's a chronic debilitating bacterial disease of animals and humans caused by mycobacterium boris as you have studied tuberculosis in humans that is caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis so you have to remember that in cattle and buffalo tuberculosis is caused by mycobacterium bovis and this mycobacterium bovis it is able to infect other type of domestic animals as well and some wild animal population but for us as this disease is zoonotic in nature so it has a public health importance so i am in this lecture i will be also discussing tuberculosis in humans that is caused by mycobacterium boris etiology so tb it is caused by in humans or in animals the mycobacterium it is basically gram positive acid fast bacilli which is non spore forming bacteria and it is able to replicate inside cells so it is intercellular in nature so there are different species of mycobacterium that causes tb in different animals and humans so if you see the list on this slide mycobacteria boves that we are going to discuss today it is it causes tb in bovines or in cattle and buffalo capri causes tb in goats tuberculosis causes tb in humans and you should also remember that mycobacterium tuberculosis that is the primary causative agent of tb in humans that can also be transmitted to animals as well similarly there are some other species which are not common but you have to just quickly go, go through these species that's my uh, mycobacterium microti mycobacterium avium complex which is further composed of two important species mycobacterium avium and mycobacterium avium intracellulare which causes tb in some avian species apart from those species that cause tb in different animals there are some other mycobacterium species which are important for from human point of view as well as from animal point of view one of them which is very well known is leprosy this disease is found in humans it's a very well known disease very dangerous one and it is caused by mycobacterium leprae similarly johnny's disease it's a very common disease in cattle and buffalo which is caused by mycobacterium para tuberculosis now we come to the another very important term called mycobacterium tuberculosis complex this term is used for genetically related group of mycobacterium species that cause tb in humans or animals so it means these species are have some time genetic relatedness with one another and you can read out the names or the list from this slide hosts so what type of animals that can be affected with mycobacterium boris so they include cattle and buffalo sheep goat sometimes bison elk and deer which are the wild animals sometimes in camels and of course in humans as well so it means in all these animals and humans mycobacterium boris is able to cause tuberculosis worldwide distribution so this disease is found 
in most of the parts of the world, especially in developing and in underdeveloped countries. While some of the countries like Sweden, Iceland, Finland, Switzerland, and some other countries are TB free. Transmission. About 90% cases of all bovine tuberculosis are transmitted through respiratory route, or in other words, aerosol transmission is the most common route of transmission of mycobacterium embolus, but it can also be transmitted from by other routes like oral route, congenital route, genital transmission, similarly directly through opening of the teeth of the hurdle and also through broken skin. Now we come to the bovine transmission of the bovine tuberculosis in humans. How or what are um, the different types of uh, factors that help in transmission of mycobacterium bovis from animals to human, from human to animals, and to from human to human. So the first one is the animal to human transmission that occurs due to inhalation of the infected dust or, or consumption of the raw milk. This mostly occurs in the villages. The second is the human to animal transmission, which rarely occurs when those humans which are infected with mycobacterium bovis, if they urinate or defecate, if they urinate or defecate in cow sheds or pastures where animal graze, so healthy animals can be infected by my mycobacterium bovis. Similarly, the Transmission of bovine TB from one human, or in other words, the transmission of mycobacterium bovis from one human to another human is rare and less effective as we know. It is very quick in mycobacterium tuberculosis, but unlike mycobacterium tuberculosis, in which the human, human to human transmission is very easy, quick. So in bovine type of tuberculosis or the transmission of mycobacterium bovis from a human to a human is possible but it is less effective. So this disease in animals is endemic in Pakistan and for this purpose you need to read some publications about prevalence of bovine TB. So what are the predisposing factors which put the animals at risk of having bovine tuberculosis. So first one is the poor nutrition. If the animal is not properly fed, so the animal is stressed and immune system doesn't work proper, properly. Similarly, poor housing conditions, presence of TB infected animals in the herd, genetics, and other some other factors are important to put the healthy animals at risk of getting mycobacterium bovis. So now we come to the human population. How the human are at risk? Or what type of human population is at risk of getting bovine type of tuberculosis? So they can be farmers, veterinarians, avatar workers, lab workers, or animal handlers who are facing or who are dealing with animals infected with mycobacterium bovis. Similarly, some other factors like age, nutrition deficiencies. Consumption of raw or unpasteurized milk, poor housing and overcrowding conditions, in rural settings, comorbidities, all these put human population at risk of having mycobacterium bovis. The pathogenesis. So pathogenesis is very important to understand, for, but I have given this part of lecture as assignment. So I hope that students will do it by themselves. And if they have any question or difficulty, they can ask me later. Now we come to the clinical signs and symptoms. So one very important thing to remember that is that the TB is a chronic disease. Either if you are discussing in humans or animals, but in both cases, you will always remember it is a chronic disease. So if we discuss very quickly the animal signs and animals, so 
the, in early stages, the animal is usually asymptomatic, followed by a progressive emaciation. Emaciation means the animal gets weak day by day. Similarly, there's a fever, cough, and enlarged lymph nodes in advanced stages. So in humans, so as you people have already studied this disease medical microbiology, so you can quickly review it from your previous lectures. But in humans, if we discuss specifically signs of bovine tuberculosis, that are almost same as classical TB, but they are less severe. In classical TB, which is caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis, the signs are much severe as compared to bovine type of tuberculosis in humans. Now we come to the lab diagnosis. So in cattle and buffalo, we diagnose it in the same way like we diagnose the other type of bacterial disease. The first one or the first step, which is the gold standard, is the isolation and identification of this microorganism. And of course, you people know very well that we do it by culturing of this bacteria on specific media or selective media. So we know that we use Lewens and Jensen media in humans to culture mycobacterium tuberculosis. But if you want to culture mycobacterium bovis, you need stone drinks media. So there are some other media also available to culture mycobacterium bovis and mycobacterium tuberculosis. And that is a question that you need to prepare by yourself. You can search it through internet. And this is important from the examination point of view. So the second very important thing you need to remember is that you can stain the sample directly by Zeden Zeal Nelson steering, or which is also known as acid fasting. Similarly, we can also use an indirect test or skin sensitivity test, which is called tuberculin test. And tuberculin test is just like Montox test. You have studied Montox test in humans, which is a skin sensitivity test performed in humans. But in animals, if you want to screen a herd of cattle, for the presence of mycobacterium bovis, you can use tuberculin test. The procedure and concept is almost similar like we do it in humans as Montox test. Similarly, some other tests which are very specific, reliable, sensitive, like ELISA, PCR, they can also be used for mycobacterium bovis. Treatment. As you know, that treatment in humans is a long time or a long term treatment which requires six months to one year. So, because of this reason and because of the economy, because of the high treatment costs, the treatment of TB is usually not practiced in animals. But for your review, you must remember that in humans we use different types of drugs like isoniazide, ambutol, pyrazinamide, streptomycin, quinolones, singly or in combinations to treat TB. Either it, or it is because of the mycobacterium bovis or it's because of the mycobacterium tuberculosis. And my question from my students is why? such a long-term treatment is required to treat mycobacterium bovis or mycobacterium tuberculosis. And from this slide, you should also study some publications related to the multi-drug resistant TB or XDR TB. This is very important because it's a very big issue nowadays. Last but not the least, we have discussed about the prophylaxis and control. Why? The question arises, why? it's very important to control this disease. So first one is the, it's zoonotic potential. As I already discussed that mycobacterium bovis is also able to transmit to humans and cause TB in humans. So it is very important to control this disease in animals. So if you have controlled this disease in animals, 
So of course, the prevalence of TB due to mycobacterium boris will go down automatically. Similarly, as you know, it's a chronic disease, debilitating disease. So there are huge economic losses because of loss in productivity in terms of milk and meat. Similarly, there are also some restrictions that are put by OIE and we cannot export our meat and milk products if we have TB positive animals population among us. Similarly, the, there's also a threat of transmission of TB from animals to wild animals, from domestic animal to wild animals. So if you have some endangered wild species, animal species near you in some you know, for wildlife parks or let's suppose in some forest in jungle population near your area where the domestic animals are grazing and if such animals are TB positive so these domestic animals they can transmit mycobacterium bovis to other susceptible wild animal species. Similarly because of the problem or issue of antibiotic resistance it is important to control TB in animals as well. So what are the reasons of control program failures in Pakistan? The first is very obvious, it's the poverty because there is high cost of eradication programs and there is no compensation of cult animals. Because as I told you earlier, that we usually don't treat a TB positive animal. So only solution is to slaughter or cull that animal. But of course, because we don't have compensation programs, so the government, because of the economic uh, reasons, they are unable to pay cons compensation to the farmers for the current animals. Similarly, there's limited access of diagnosis. So if there is limited access of diagnosis, so this disease will not be diagnosed in animals one time, and it will be keep transmitting to other healthy animals. Similarly, there is poor awareness, literacy programs, the farmers, they don't know the importance of TB in animals, so they don't test their animals. So in this way, the prevalence of TB stands high in Pakistan. So what are different steps that are needed to control bovine TB? So if we quickly read this slide, so first one is the mandatory test and slaughter strategy or test and segregation strategy. Periodic screening of the infected herds with the tuber clean test, you can quickly screen a infected herd. Similarly, strict quarantine measures are required if an animal is found positive in a herd, so it must be separated very quickly from the rest of the animals. Similarly, strong disinfection of the animal housing farms is required where TB positive animals are detected. Similarly, prevention of wildlife interaction with domestic animals, pasteurization of the milk, awareness programs about the ill effects of raw milk or unpasteurized milk consumption is required to stop the transmission of TB, bovine TB in humans. Last but not the least, we need to test humans that are positive for bovine TB and we have to treat them properly. Thank you very much.